And all writers instinctively know how to show and how to tell. I've been teaching for 22 years and I've never met a writer who didn't do both naturally. But the thing that's hard, the thing that writers don't know until you learn it, of course, and then it's easy, is how to identify which is which. And most of all, that's difficult when either when it's material that springs deep from inside the heart, because when something comes from deep inside, when we reread our sentences, we get triggered back into the memory. Even if it's a mild or a pleasant memory, we get triggered back into it. Um, and so that pulls us down into the weeds of that experience and then we're instantly immersed in that and so we can't see anything else. It's hard to have objectivity and it's hard to analyze then what the sentence is. Is it telling or is it showing and is that the right thing? Um, so we get this kind of natural blindness to what's on the page. So we need both skills. One is not better than the other. So let's look at why showing not telling matters um, and how it actually works. Why do we hear so much about it? So is it really that important? And the answer is yes, it is. Because if you want your writing to get published or you want to be noticed by an agent, or if you send a story to an editor, um, and they add a comment saying, show, don't tell. They want you to change something from telling into showing. Um, that's usually what you'll see. You won't usually see tell this on your manuscript. Um, one of the most popular show, don't tell writing quotes is from Anton, Anton Chekhov. And he said, don't tell me the moon is shining. Show me the glint of light on broken glass. See? Um, so... The thing for you to do before you move forward with your own writing is to think about the model author or the model piece of writing that you're trying to emulate in some way. So that's always your starting point because no matter what advice you read, you always want to refer back to what you're trying to do. And so the story you're trying to write, even if you haven't identified a model order for that author for that particular um, story, in the back of your head, you've probably got an idea. You know, you, you want to write like um, Elizabeth Strout or Raymond Carver or, um, you know, Suzanne Collins' Hunger Games. You That's your goal. And that's great when you know that. And of course, you can deviate from it. You're not going to be slavish about it. But it's a guide that answers questions for you. It's a reference point. So you would go to those authors first in order to establish how you're going to proceed. So just to summarize, telling simply states the facts. Telling informs the reader that a character is strong or angry or tired or that the weather is cold or hot or windy. Um, that's telling. And then showing paints a picture that the reader sees in her mind. She doesn't need to be told something or to be spoon fed the information because she's going to deduce that fact from what you've shown on the page. And so rather than telling that your character is angry, you could have them slam a fist on the table. You could have their face and neck flush red. You could have their voice rise um, uh, or any of the other ways. You know, if you think about the people you know, what do they do when they're angry? What are those danger signs? And if they're tired, then um, your character could yawn, she could stretch, she could um, feel her eyes closing and perhaps her head falls off to the side and she realizes she's dropped off. Um, and if your character is looking at someone who's tired, then they might have black shadows under their eyes or maybe their eyes are bloodshot um, and maybe someone else says to them, are, are you exhausted? Did you not get any sleep last night? You, you look exhausted. Um, so that's 
ways of showing and not telling. And that's how you make the reader part of the experience because they're really, they're imagining and making conclusions from what you've shown on the page.